How's it going guys? We're back again, but this time we're going to be making sake. So this will be the first video in a long series of videos about how to make sake. I would love to put it all in one video, but to make this product right here is about 20 hours of labor. This is everything we're going to need to brew sake. Obviously we don't have the water with us yet. We're going to go get that next week. Uh, very important you get good water. Do not, do not use tap water or I will come after you. Um, so we've got two bags right here. This is short grain, highly polished, um, California grown rice. We have 35 pounds of it. Next up, we got our rice steamer right here. We use a bamboo one. The idea is with sake is you don't want to introduce a whole lot of moisture to it. Um, that being said, that's why we steam it instead of boil it. A Pyrex fish put the rice in once we're done cooking it. Next up, the most important thing we got here that a lot of people don't realize is our Koji Ken. This is Aspergillus. Um, in other words, it's a grain fungus that we use to break our starches into sugars. We got our lactic acid. This is your pH adjuster. Um, this is gonna obviously bring your pH down. We got a scale, really important to have one of these. We got our Epsom salts here. We're gonna add two grams about of this. Um, we're gonna do that on day one once we've started. We've got our salt substitute here. We got our yeast nutrient, which is a kind of a brewing blend of salts. Next, we've got our bentonite here. This is very helpful to have for making your sake come out clear. We've got a stirring spoon here. Next, we've got our digital thermometer. This is very handy um, when monitoring your temperature of your actual liquid. Um, I love this thing because it has an alarm on it. So when I'm brewing my, I'm brewing, but growing my mold on the rice, uh, we call that the Koji. This is an alarm on it and it will go off if I go too high, which is really bad for growing Koji. Um, we got another thermometer here, um, aluminum foil. I use this just to put it down, it's sterile. Put it down, put the rice on it. And then we've got our, little grain bags that I put um, in my steamer whenever I'm steaming my rice, just so I can pull it all out at once. So yeah, that's pretty much it. The last big thing you're gonna need is a vessel. This is a six gallon brewing bucket with a little spout on it. I'm gonna clean this before I use it. Um, but this recipe I'm doing is for a two gallon recipe. So I will post a link for that later on but you're gonna want as much space as possible because the sake, it fills up. Probably half my time of making sake is making the rice and making the rice correctly. So we're not gonna be doing um, a cheap, quick sake. A lot of people on YouTube do. We are actually doing a recipe that goes all the way back to about the 1630s from Japan directly. Um, yeah, we're gonna do it right and we're gonna make better sake than last time. This is our previous one. As you can tell, it's still very much clear. Um, this is actually the last bottle that I have of the Junmai. Um, so we're going to be saving this for a side-by-side -side comparison later. So appreciate you guys watching. Stay tuned. We're going to do tons of videos on this. I want to teach all you guys how to make sake. It's not really that hard. I think it's easier than brewing beer. But that being said, Saki is all about your timing. You have you have probably 40 different steps that you have to follow. Um, and so, you know, getting a calendar set up and writing on the calendar what days are for what thing, really important. So once again, this is what you need. This is all you need for sake, um, except for the rice, obviously, or the water, I mean. Um, and then, you know, recipe like I found and I ride on it. So stay tuned for more videos. We'll see you next time. I got nothing else for you guys.